Hello, hello, hello. Today I'm welcoming you to the EBM Scholars Show. I'm going to explain the reasons which will make you be denied the diversity visa during the visa interview at the U.S. Embassy. These are not reasons for not winning the diversity visa. Meaning, I'm assuming you have already applied for the diversity visa. The selection process has been done. You checked the diversity visa lottery results and you find out you are among the winners. Your entry has been selected. You are the winner. You went ahead to fill the visa form, the immigrant visa form, the famous form number DS260. After filling that one, you are going to the visa interview. So these are the reasons when you appear at the visa interview, possible to be denied the visa. Despite being among the winners, you have been excited. You have won the diversity visa lottery. Possible you have started celebrating with the pilau, rice, nice food, whatever type of food you enjoy. But you are at the visa interview meeting the consular officer at the U.S. Embassy for the first time. In the majority of you, that will be my first, your first time to appear at the U.S. Embassy. Or to be exactly to appear at the consular officer's session there on the window to be asking for the interview. There are five important reasons. And I'll give you one bonus. But these reasons will automatically make you be denied the visa despite being among the winners and already you at the visa interview. Reason number one. The failure to meet education and or work experience. We all know that. One among the requirements for you to participate in the diversity visa lottery is either to have a high school education level. If you don't have high school education level, you need to have extra work experience. And on the work experience, I'm talking about qualifying work experience. What does that mean? Not every work experience qualifies to be considered as two years of qualifying work experience. Meaning, there are some of the jobs which have been categorized by the Department of Labor that these jobs are in a uh, special range between seven and above. If you have any range below seven, it doesn't qualify as two years' work, of work experience. So, before you fill the visa form, better to know if you are a chef, you are a cook, you have to go and read the instruction. What is the proper terminology to use there and what to add there? That is reason number one. Reason number two. Incorrect eligibility country. We know that for you to be able to participate in the diversity visa lottery, they don't care your status as a citizen of whatever country you are. They are looking about the country where you are born. Meaning, if you are born in Kenya, but currently you are a citizen of Canada, you will still be eligible to apply on the question number six and question number seven, they ask the country of birth. And then the following question is, are you claiming 
the eligibility in the lottery based on the country of birth? Most of you, it will be yes. The country of birth is the country of eligibility. But there are some people, let's say, at the moment, Nigeria is not an eligible country. Canada is not an eligible country. So let's say you are Canadian. Or let's say you are Nigerian. Place of birth is Nigeria. Or place of birth is Canada. But you are married to someone from Ghana. Ghana is an eligible country. So you will say place of birth is Nigeria. Are you claiming the, your eligibility based on the country of birth? The answer will be no. Because you are allowed to use eligibility of your spouse, countries of birth. So you will say, I'm not claiming my eligibility based on the cut of my, of my birth, but I'm using the cut of my spouse. So there are some of exceptions which are there you need to know. But if you remove that aspect, you put a mistake. People confuse. I've seen these two important cases happen, and I'm going to give you examples. People confused between the country of birth and the country of citizenship, and some people confused between the country of birth versus the country where you live today. There is one person, is Kenyan, was born in Kenya, but originally from another country, Somalia. The country of birth is Kenya. The person lives in South Africa. But when they say, are you claiming the eligibility based on the country of birth? The person made a mistake and said no. And put the country where he lives now. So assume, the person assumed, where does the country, where, which country do you live today? So by putting that way, put a wrong kind of eligibility. The kind of eligibility put is South Africa which is just the country the person lives. Even if he's a citizen there but was not born there, the person was born in another country, which is Kenya. There is another case. A person is from Uganda, but was born in Saudi Arabia. The person, after being born in Saudi Arabia, since was a baby, was brought back to Uganda. The birth certificate passport shows the place of birth is Saudi Arabia. The person is in Uganda, has never traveled out of Uganda since he was brought back, since was the baby. The country of birth, the person put uh, Dubai, whatever, UAE, Saudi Arabia. But when it came to the country of eligibility, are you claiming said no? Oh, I'm Ugandan. So the person put Uganda because he's a citizen of Uganda. But the person won the DV lottery. The South African person won the DV lottery. This person won the DV lottery. So now, after winning the DV lottery, the case number is in AF Africa. But basically, the place of birth, which is supposed to be eligibility, you're supposed to be from Asia. Saudi Arabia. So, according to the instructions, you'll be denied the visa. You can try, depending on if someone is very generous, okay, and especially maybe if you are from the same region, like the person from K who were born from Kenya, you put a wrong country, but you are still in Africa, but if you put a wrong one, for, even for, for, from Asia to Africa, Africa to Asia, that even is the worst mistake ever. So, all those kind of situations, the person is likely to be denied the visa. And it is written there, you will be denied the visa if you put the wrong eligibility country. Number three, going to do a lie. This is not a mistake. Lying on the form on the number of children. The question is, when you are going to fill the visa application form, let us start with the DV application form. The question is, 
How many children do you have? You decided to put a zero. And later you win, you say, oh, by the way, I have three children. I forgot to add them. You will never forget to write if you have children. There are things you can forget in your life. You can forget where your phone is. You can forget where your shoes, your shoes are. But you will never forget to say that you don't have the children or you have children. When they say the number of children, it means put the number of children. That's why if you use a service for someone to help you to fill the Levi lottery, don't be like, oh, you'll add these children later. No. You must add them on the time you apply so that when you win, you come with them. Even if you don't want to come with them, you have to put your children. Whether the children you live with them or they don't live with you. The only children which are not, who are not going to be included there are those at the age of 21 and the above or under the age of 21 and, and who are married, those you cannot count them. That's the only thing you can be able to do that. Whether the children they live with you, they live with their parents. So that's why you need to prepare the photo in advance so that you have the photo. Not the time to apply is there. You have a conflict with the baby mama. Or oh, the, ma the mother doesn't have the children. The children then boarding school. Oh, I didn't have them. Oh, let me apply without the children. That is a mistake. So if you put a wrong children which are not your, who are not your children or you put the different number lying you'll be disqualified that is on the instruction of the diversity visa lottery number four marital status there are marital status are you married what is your marital status unmarried unmarried means you are not married you are single there is no status of being uh engaged you are unmarried even if your wedding is tomorrow, if you are planning today, if you are still not married, you are unmarried. If you are divorced, if you are widowed, if you are, your spouse is American citizen or not, there are other options there. If you know you are legally married and say you are not, that's a lie, you will be denied the visa. I know there are mistakes people can put which are honest mistakes. Maybe you had a traditional wedding and you know is that maybe by court of law, maybe in your account, you didn't know that is not a problem if you say that is not. You say, this is my wife, but you didn't have the certificate at that time. You went to get the new certificate. You will show the evidence. But putting your girlfriend, putting your boyfriend, someone you know for sure you're not married, you are causing yourself a problem. When we say, if you are married, you have higher chance of winning, we don't mean that just by being married, America prefers married people than single people. No. It's because if you are married, a husband can apply as a main applicant and a wife can apply as a main applicant. You add your spouse and he's adding your spouse. And if the husband wins, comes with the wife. If the wife wins, comes with the husband. That means you have two chances. That is when we say we increase the chance. Not just by being married. If you one person is applying, is one chance just like if you are single. So that is reason number four. Reason number five, it comes to the police clearance. If they run police clearance and it, they're going to find out you have committed a serious crime and sometimes you might not have a serious crime committed at all, but they want to see your social media in the last five years. They want to see what how what phone numbers have you used. All social media, even if you are not using today, TikTok, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, whatever it is, what are your username? So you might not have the police clearance, but if you go there and you have put the certain comments to harm Americans, to harm the president of the United States, no matter how much you are upset, those comments on social media might cause you to be denied the visa. For instance, you don't like Biden or you don't like Trump. You say, why this is a serious president? I could do one, two, three, four, which are harm, and you post the comment. That comment can harm you because you can be a risk to the United States. 
if you go to the security questions, there is a question. Have you ever even have a thought or supported monetary encouragement, moral support to organizations which can cause harm, like Boko Haram, like ISIS? So if you supported those, even by comments, even if you don't have a crime, can come to hunt you down the road. So you need to watch what you are posting on social media. The bonus point, I said I'm giving five points. Bonus points is the medical and passport. Medical, I made a separate video about the medical. Very rare people to be denied on the medical situation. And I explained majority people will be denied if they have a certain type of mental health which has been proven and they have done a serious harm maybe mass shooting, have done a serious harm to the community, like taking a knife and just chop people or whatever, those kind of effect proven can cause you a problem. Or you have been a serious drug user, those can be able uh, to be able to be causing you to be denied the visa. But uh, those like HIV, AIDS, hepatitis, whatever disease, there is no problem with that at all. Don't worry. On those one you can watch the video about the medical on that one the last bonus point is the passport it used to be when they introduced the passport there was a requirement that if you apply without a passport they deny you if you put your wrong passport number they deny you but now with the removal of the passport we believe that you'll not be denied by making a mistake if for the previous time a wrong passport so we believe that is not going to happen. So those are some of the important reasons why someone will be denied. So now you will not be denied because of the passport. Medical is just very, very rare cases. But the majority of the most common reasons are police clearance or criminal record, marital status, uh, children lying the children, incorrect country of uh, eligibility, failure to meet the requirement of education or uh, education or uh, work experience of that nature, you will be denied at the visa. So those are, you need to prepare yourself. That's why when you fill, after winning, filling the visa form, it is written, when you apply lottery, you win the lottery, the first notification letter it is written, winning the diversity visa lottery doesn't guarantee you will be given the visa. Meaning you have higher chances of still being denied the visa. And they say, in order to increase your chances of being given the visa, you must do one more thing. Go and fill the visa form correctly so that you can increase your chances of not being denied. Increase the chances of getting to be given that visa. So the DSC 260 is a very vital form to make sure that you refer some of the things you put there and then you are going to make sure that you put everything in a correct way. I will also make another video to explain the mistakes you are going to do which will not affect you in any way when you win the diversity visa lottery. Thank you so much.